For today's video, you'll need in class 22. This is the day where we are going to take our flowchart proofs that we've been writing for congruent triangles and transition over into our official two column format. This is going to be what your problems will look like when you eventually take your assessment over this topic. So to get us started, let's talk a little bit about two column proofs. They are going to involve organizing the statements and the reasons that we've already been practicing in our flowchart proofs, but they are organized side by side rather than from top to bottom like they are in a flowchart. The reason why we transition to two column proofs is because this is more flexible. We're going to pretty quickly move into proofs that don't fit this kind of three bubbles, three boxes, one box at the bottom format. And so flowcharts will be a little bit more time consuming or tricky to use because they wouldn't all fit in this type of a format. But no matter what proof we do, we're always going to be able to just list in a logical order statements and reasons side by side to um, support whatever concept or idea we're trying to prove. So what we're going to do to get started today is actually a review exercise. So in a moment, once I give your instructions, you'll pause the video and you'll work your way through this to kind of double check that you know what you're doing. But you are going to focus on this given and prove with this uh, diagram. And the goal is for you to be able to fill in the flowchart side of these notes. So that's something we've practiced in class. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you can come up with in terms of a flowchart proof for this particular situation. Okay, we're going to check your work and see how it went. If C is the midpoint of segment BD, we're going to focus on that bottom part of the diagram, and midpoint should tell us about congruent segments. As it is given to us, though, C is the midpoint of segment BD does not give us congruent sides or congruent angles, so it needs to belong in one of these three bubbles, it doesn't matter which one, with the reason given in the blank directly below. And then directly underneath that, we're going to write what it tells us. So if your midpoint given is over here in the middle, you should be looking at your middle box next. Or if it's over here on the right, you should be looking at this right-hand side box next. What we marked was that segment BC is congruent to segment DC. Now you might have these letters in a different order or these letters in a different order. That's fine. I'm going to mark that with an S. Again, that's not required, but it's reminding me it's a pair of congruent sides. And the corresponding reason to go along with that would be definition of midpoint. Again, if you're not supposed to abbreviate definition, just go ahead and write that out and then you can put midpoint down below if you need more space. So that uses our first given. So that one's taken care of. We're going to move on to given number two here, which does look like it already has a congruent symbol. So if I mark segment AB congruent to segment AD, that looks like it's automatically a pair of congruent sides. So I'm going to skip that bubble. It's not going to be necessary. And that's going to go directly into one of my boxes. And the reason I knew that was true was because it was given. So I've successfully used both of the given pieces of information. My goal is to prove that the triangles are congruent, but I don't have enough to match one of my five criteria yet. Remember, our goal is going to be side, 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 or side, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. So far, we have two S's, so it's looking like these are probably the most likely, but we don't have that third pair of sides, and we don't have an angle, so we're not quite ready to make our conclusion yet. When you don't have any givens available, you come back to the picture. Hopefully you notice that there's a shared side here. Segment AC is used in both triangles. So we can mark that segment AC is congruent to itself. Segment AC is congruent to segment AC. That's a third pair of sides 
not given to us, but something that we noticed by looking at the picture. When we say that shared side is congruent to itself, it is the reflexive property. Now that I see my three S's lined up, I know I'm ready to make my conclusion that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC by side angle side. Okay, so hopefully that went well for you when you stopped and you tried that on your own. We are now gonna take this and show you what a two column proof looks like for the exact same problem. So we're gonna start the same way we started before. C is the midpoint of segment BD, is a statement that's being made about this situation. So we're gonna fill that in as our first statement in the left-hand column. We would investigate that part of the picture, we would mark it, but we would also need to write next to that that the reason we know that was true is because it was given. Now the goal, if this is not a pair of congruent sides or angles, is to automatically make that happen directly below. So this information should lead you to a new statement based on that definition of midpoint, since we see that vocabulary word in that statement. And so we would list, just like we did directly below it in the flowchart proof, that segment BC is congruent to segment DC, the ones that we marked along the bottom part of that picture. And then if you wanna keep track, since there's not a box for you to put an S in, you can just kind of put that out there next to the proof. That's a pair of congruent sides. We've used the midpoint given now and turn it into more useful congruent sides. So we're gonna move on to our next given. Segment AB is congruent to segment AD, just like we wrote in that box. We can label that with an S since it's a pair of sides. And we can say that we knew it was true because it was given. Now, just like before, we're done with our givens, but we only have two S's lined up. So we haven't matched any of our five criteria. So we go back to the picture. We notice that reflexive property shared segment. So we're gonna write segment AC is congruent to segment AC in our next line of the proof. Thanks to the reflexive property, we'll label that with an S because it's a pair of congruent sides. And once our three S's are ready to go, we can finish out this proof by saying that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC by side, side, side. So it is the exact same one, two, three, four, five statements just vertically organized and the same one, two, three, four, five reasons directly across from what they are explaining as we move down that proof. If you flip to the back side, we're gonna try that again. So go ahead and pause the video, try to do the flowchart version of the proof, and I'll meet you back here to talk about how to turn it into a two column proof. Okay, welcome back. I've got our two givens marked on the diagram and entered into the proof. Those were both congruent sides and congruent angles, so they could go directly into these rectangles. We didn't need the bubbles at the top. And then I also have marked here in the middle of the picture, these two angles as being congruent. Those are our vertical angles. So the vertical angles theorem will be the reason that goes with this congruent statement also about angles. Now I didn't fill that one in yet because some people are trying to get away with calling these both angle E but we can't use a single letter because there are too many angle E's for that to be clear. So we're gonna need to trace out the actual angle name and use those other two letters in the triangle as well. So angle A, E, B on the left would correspond to angle C, E, D on the right. Now, technically, if you name this angle, angle DEC, it's the same angle, but our goal is to match up those corresponding parts. 
and we need to have the E in the middle of the name to show that that's where the vertex is at. So that gives us one pair of sides and two pairs of angles. That means we're going to be ready to make our conclusion, but we do need to choose between angle side angle and angle angle side when we're trying to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CDE. So if we look carefully in that diagram at where our congruent side is located, we need to make a decision about whether that side is connected to both of the congruent angles or only to one. This side is connected to angle A, but not E. This side is connected to angle C, but not E. So this is an angle-angle side situation since that angle or since that side that's congruent is only connected to one of our congruent angles. So there was no need for the bubbles in this proof. There were no vocabulary words that we had to turn into congruent statements. There were just congruent sides and angles, either because they were given or because of the vertical angles theorem. All right, let's turn it into a two column proof. We've got a statement here about segment AB being congruent to segment DC. That was from our given. That doesn't lead us to another pair of segments or angles directly, so we can just move right on to our next given. Angle A is congruent to angle C. I'm gonna mark that out here with an A. I'm done with my given information, so my last piece of information I need before I'm able to say that those triangles are congruent is the vertical angles that we marked. So there's another pair of angles by vertical angles theorem. And then when I have those three pairs of congruent parts lined up, I'm ready to say triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CDE by angle, angle, side. That's all there is to it. So if you need help with your assignment, you can make the flow charts first and then transition into two columns, but eventually our goal will be that you can just go straight to that two column format and your brain will just visualize these flow charts in the background to make sure that you're covering all of the information that you need to before you make it to that final proof statement and that final triangle criteria. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you back in class.